EPA has to approve certain products that you are allowed to still use it in. So understand, usually what happens when we teach is we go through all the massive effects and the exposure issues and people freak out and especially should never be used again and outlawed. And well, there's certain things like different types of very high temperature gaskets or other materials that asbestos is really the only solution. It's the only mineral that can do the job. And so unfortunately we still have to use it. It had great uses. They called it the miracle fiber. That's why we titled this, but much like mm -hmm. A lot of different products we use, they say they're great and it's the next best thing in the world. And then, you know, 20 years later, we see, you know, lawyer reports and, hey, if you've been exposed to this, it's unfortunate because it happens. Hello and welcome everyone to this month's continuing education event. My name is Jessica Morgan with the Lucas OPT and I will be your host today. Uh, we are joined today by Joe Esty Jr. He is one of our performance improvement specialists here at Lucas OPT. And we have special guest, Mike Moore. He is the president of American Safety Inc. Uh, Joe and Mike work really closely together. Mike is our partner here at Lucas, uh, filling the gap uh, that we currently have uh, in environmental safety training and inspections. So uh, Mike is our resident expert here along with Joe and we're really thankful to have him here. Uh, I will be fielding questions throughout the presentation. So a little bit about the ON24 console. Uh, if you didn't catch the video that was playing before we went live, uh, you will notice that there are some applications on your screen. Feel free to move those around and minimize them. Uh, take note of the question and answer box there. Uh, feel free to submit them throughout the presentation and we will address them as they come or we will hold them till the end, but we will answer as much as we can. So without further ado, I'm very excited to introduce you to Joe and Mike. And uh, I know I've got a lot to learn about this topic as well. Yes, yeah, so I'm on the only one actually on right now. <clears throat> Mike had a little uh, Wi-Fi issue. It generally, we don't have any issues until you start something live. That's just how life works. So yeah, as Jessica mentioned, uh, Mike and I work together. He owns American Safety and I work for Lucas OPT. And we do, we do multiple pieces together. So we teach classes, which we'll bring up uh, towards the end what we teach, but a full suite of classes based on what you do for a living, uh, whether you're a worker, supervisor, custodian, we'll bring that up. Uh, and then we also do residential and uh, public building inspections. So you have your training and you also have inspections in different houses. We'll talk about the requirements of that uh, but generally what happens is when we talk to people, wh wherever I go, whether it's, you know, at work and people are in a class and don't quite understand why they're there or just people at a store and they ask what I do, it's usually not random. That'd be weird if somebody walked up randomly, but uh, it happens. But so when you say asbestos, most people don't know what it is. And so they know the word, they've heard the word, but they don't quite understand what that entails. And so we'll go through some of the background in a minute and the details of what it is. But what most people know is I thought asbestos was banned. And so it doesn't exist anymore, we're fine. Well, uh, much like a lot of other things like lead and different chemicals, some stuff gets banned in certain scopes, let's put it that way, and it still exists. And uh, there are still mines throughout the world that still mine asbestos. And we'll talk about the different types, but there's different mines for different types. Uh, but one more that was uh, kind of alarming is that last year we actually imported 300 metric tons of raw chrysotile asbestos. Now we'll, we'll show you a picture of what chrysotile is, but it's the most commonly used asbestos uh, form and we're still importing it. And I only, I cannot find a lot of detail on it other than there's this, this podcast randomly I showed up on, uh, on asbestos. These guys, they're called the asbestos twins or the asbestos gurus or, but they're talking about how we imported 300 metric tons. And so the problem is, we had bans in place in 78, they banned certain materials from being used or certain production and import. We had EPA ban uh, quite a bit more in 2019. We don't have that in here. Uh, you can look that up, look up EPA ban 2019. But the problem is then why are we still importing it? So if we're banning it in 19 at the same time we're importing it, it means that it's still out there. And so that's why when people say, isn't it banned? We want you to start thinking it might be, or that might be banned on certain levels, but it's still out there and that doesn't, talk about the fact that it's already installed in your house or in different materials prior to it being banned. And so, so that's why it's important to learn about. Mike, are you back on to add anything else? If not, that's okay. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I'm on. I'm on. We'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how the connection goes if it's Bay State or not. Yeah. So uh, l- let's talk about that band just briefly. Just the, the 2019 EPA ban. EPA the EPA tiled that as their final use rule for asbestos products. So that's revision one because I think it's going to have to be extended a little bit more just in case. Uh, with that ban, EPA also did not eliminate uh, asbestos use in the United States either. They made it very, uh, very difficult to, to import asbestos products, manufacture asbestos products, and sell asbestos products in the United States. But there's always caveats out there that allow for, in certain industries and certain products, asbestos to still be continued to be used. So that's just something we want to remind people on on that one is that it could still be found in certain products in certain industries, um, even after we, we say that we're done, we're done using it, we're banning it, and everything else. Is that on my side? Yeah, it's a little bit of feedback on your side, and that's okay. And okay. and part of that is we talk about more in depth. Uh, EPA has to approve certain products that you are allowed to still use it in. So understand, usually what happens when we teach is we go through all the massive effects and the exposure issues, and people freak out, and especially should never be used again and outlawed. And well, there's certain things like different types of very high temperature gaskets or other materials that asbestos is really the only solution. It's the only mineral that can do the job. And so unfortunately we still have to use it. It had great uses. They called it the miracle fiber. That's why we titled this. But much like mm-hmm. a lot of different products we use, they say they're great and it's the next best thing in the world. And then, you know, 20 years later we see, you know, lawyer reports and hey, if you've been exposed to this, it's unfortunate because it happens. Mm-hmm. Good. Well, so what is still being imported? What is this asbestos? Where can we find it? Tell me a little bit more about that. Okay, so as far as what's being imported, uh, these are only going to be special used items at this point. Uh, in order to import asbestos products, uh, you have to actually get EPA's approval to, do, to use these certain products. So say like a, an oil refinery that will lose millions of dollars a day if they shut down production uh say that they want to be using asbestos or they need asbestos for a certain certain type of high temperature gasket um they can get proper uh approval from epa to continue to use these products it's going to be specialized use uh really when we start focusing on on where it might be currently uh, i'd highly doubt that you would find it in, in today's uh, uh time that in say like home depot Lowe's, or any of your hardware stores but just a few years ago, we found it. It wasn't long ago where we were actually getting into it. So uh, I guess we'll break down what it is. You know, we, we talk about asbestos, but it's good to know what we're actually talking about, the mineral. Uh, this picture that's on the screen right now is a, uh, it's an example of a naturally occurring chrysotile asbestos. Uh, by far the most common type of asbestos we use in the United States. Uh, this one would be found in about 94% of the products that would contain asbestos it will be most likely chrysotile. Uh, we're talking all over uh, uh, the construction industry being used, uh, flooring products, walls, ceilings, roofs, siding of houses. Uh, we are constantly uh, amazed by the products we find uh, doing asbestos inspections, that things that we thought weren't going to be asbestos that actually end up testing positive. So, and along with that, we found in some newer products as well. Uh, I share the story in our in our training when we do classes. Uh, we were dealing with a contractor in Yakima who actually got into some, uh, uh, they had some issues with our house. It was a, it was a 2014 originally built home. Uh, they had had some water damage and they had lost some of the, the flooring in their house essentially to the water damage. They called up a, a local contractor in Yakima to come and uh, do some uh a restoration work in their house and by law and this is the law you have to follow it uh prior to any construction work activities uh we're supposed to be testing products for asbestos whether it's a new building or old building uh it must be done well in this particular case the contractor tested the flooring uh it turns out that in this 2014 house that their vinyl sheet flooring in their house had 60 percent chrysotile asbestos in it uh the homeowner was was how do, how do I say this nice? But they weren't happy. Let's put it that way. Uh, they were under the impression, like most people are, that asbestos was an old product and is only found in old uh, old building products. Well, in this case, it wasn't. This was in their new house. So this this actually happened in 2016. 
is when the restoration job occurred. And uh, they didn't believe the contractor. They said, there's no way there's asbestos in my new house. There's no way you put it there. And uh, they, it was it was there. They got a second opinion, essentially a second inspector to come in and test it, and it turned out to be 60% as well. So that's the concern. The concern for me wasn't so much that home, but the concern for me at that time was, what about the construction company? What about the contractor? What about the guys who installed that product? The homeowners were upset because their home had asbestos in it and it was new. Uh, but the contractor is where my concern comes in because someone had to install that flooring. Someone had to cut that flooring. Uh, the contractor wasn't aware of what they had, but they had it. And that flooring came from Home Depot. And so it, well, I'm not sticking on Home Depot, but I'm just saying they happened to have some product there that was. So this is where we got to be really thinking about it. The best thing that a consumer could do is read labels. If you're, if you're at the local hardware store, if you're looking at products, read your labels, look for the presence of asbestos, and see what's there. So, so that, that's kind of where we're at with it right now uh, as far as where we might find it. You got anything to add to that, Joe? Yeah, so you're showing that, we're showing that picture of the what is asbestos, uh, the chrysotile. You look at it, and it's kind of like a little beard. It's almost like a little bit of like a floss structure. You generally would not see it. Uh, I have a, a, a rock that's completely locked down and glued and and none of the hairs are getting out, but uh, we're talking, it's hard to even see. It'd be hard to see with just your eyes if you were looking, but it's in 40% of the land. So it's in a lot of places, just not in big veins. It's very small, but the problem is it expands. So it's not when it's in this little rib of the rock, it's when people start breaking it up and start pulling it. So I'm doing that. We watch these videos where people pull this asbestos mineral out. What happens is, and we'll talk about the exposure, is that hair gets so small that you can't even see more. And so I got this, this little penny and see, so you can't even see that on the screen. That's small enough already, okay? Now, if you think about Abe Lincoln's chin, that small, that's, that there can be 20,000 fibers in that. So if you think 20,000 fibers in that little piece, you are not going to be walking around going, oh, there's asbestos floating around, and hey, there's Mr. Asbestos walking down the street, right? It's, it's literally invisible. And so we do sampling for it, and I won't go in depth on that. It's more in our training. But it's you can't see it. And so when people are doing this work, like you said, the contractor – cutting vinyl tile or they're grinding tiles down all these other things that construction companies do it's not like it's just going to pop up it's not like this glowing green material and so yeah just just a little added to that is that's why it's a that's why it's more of a scary mineral to use Absolutely. and so speaking of that we had yeah a, i mean it's a And so as Mike talked about on this, uh, this is what we show in all of our training. So it's just, these aren't just the only uses. I mean, there was, it was in, you know, thousands of thousands of products. These are just some of the ones that we've seen. And if you look on that, uh, you take some time and you watch this again, think about your craft or what you do, or just as a average Joe homeowner, I can say that because my name's Joe. You can't, Mike, I'm Joe homeowner. So if you go, if you go look at that, <laughs> if you go look at that, there's a lot of stuff that you're going to get into, whether you think about it or not. If you're installing a light in your sheet rock and you hit, you know, vermiculite, which will show, and you didn't know it was up there, now you're in a bad spot. And that happened to me. I had a 1954 home. I was not trained, so let's go ahead and lay that caveat out. I was, I did not know what I did not know about asbestos. This is way back. And this house was full. It was like the asbestos museum, okay, in Washington, swear to God. And they had they had pictures in this house, uh, black and white pictures that said Hey, this wall that's in your house, it's asbestos with big exclamation points and these people smiling, you know, and that sounded great back then. And then I realized after I did the job that, oh, shoot, what is this? So I'm breaking into ceilings. I'm breaking into walls. I have insulation falling out and I can see dust. So remember, I said 20,000 fibers on the chin. Well, I'm seeing dust now. I don't know how much is even in that. So it took a vermiculite shower, which is the, the kitty litter type stuff. Uh, and I'll show you a slide on that, but we've had a number of people when we say vermiculite, a lot of people know what that is because they go to Home Depot or a, or a landscaping place and people use vermiculite in irrigation or landscaping. That is not, vermiculite does not contain asbestos, not 100%. It was a specific brand called Zonolite, and that came out of Libby, Montana. So don't, don't watch this and go, you know, try to light your yard on fire and restart. It's, vermiculite is good in its use. It was a specific mine that had it. So, but yeah, as you're walking around your house, as you're doing work, you look at this chart, there are so many different uses. Well, I, as a homeowner, am looking at that going, man, uh, the DIY network sure didn't prepare me for uh, breaking into these walls and being safe. I got my safety goggles and my gloves and I've got my equipment, but man, if my home's much older, 
So this is for me. I thank you for this. I, I now <laughs> know what to look at a little a little more closely or be a little more prepared for. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, television does not do us a lot of favors when it comes into this this industry. Uh, yeah, I, I yell at my TV, and I can't watch the HG network anymore. I can't do it. Or was it, it FYI network or whatever? Those home improvement places, I can't do it. I grew up watching uh, this old house, on uh, and the, the, this old house guys be like, "Yeah, you got some plaster here. We got it." And they start poking at it and knocking it down. Yeah, we got it. Don't worry, we got it. It's fine. Nobody ever talked about asbestos in those, and uh, it, it really hurts homeowners because they think, "Well, I can do that. That's a piece of cake." Oh, the other thing, YouTube guys, do not go to YouTube for your information on asbestos abatement, please. If you think you might have it in your house, you have popcorn ceilings. Do not go to YouTube. There's a lot of really bad information on how to properly deal with it out there. Please contact us. We're the professionals. We know what we're doing here. Um, but, yeah, I mean, they'll do it all the time. They'll break into it. Very rarely will they say, oh, we have popcorn ceiling. That might be asbestos. Let's get that tested. And I'm like, yes, finally, victory. We got something good. And then I'm yelling at the TV, what about the walls? What about the floors? You know, you're, you're, you're knocking down this wall that might be plastered and full of asbestos. We don't know. Or sheetrock, and it could have asbestos in it, and it's like they just they kill us on this one. But uh, it, you know, we we can't uh, we can't force homeowners to care. It, it takes us actually to do it ourselves. So, yeah, I'm looking at this list that's on the that's on the screen right now, and uh, I think I, I personally dealt with most of this stuff here. Uh, it's amazing because not all of it looks like asbestos, like Bill was saying. It doesn't just jump out there; it just might be there. So, all right, good. Yeah. So we're going to show you real quick a video on. Uh... These were the uses, but this is a very specific use in this video. These are the uncommon uses, I guess, if you will. Help! Help! It's no use screaming at a time like this! Nobody will hear you! Help! 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 No, it no, it isn't. help does help Dorothy you're waking up oh. 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 unusual weather we're having ain't it yeah so that was a that was a pretty uncommon use Wizard of Oz Wizard of Oz is like the uh, uh, I read a I read an attorney site that talked about what was in <clears throat> there that contained asbestos so obviously the snow in that okay if you didn't know that that is pure chrysotile they are just snowing those people in with pure chrysotile so a uh, big deal okay uh, we have a couple a couple slides on what it does to you but understand that asbestos does not hit you it's not like a shock hazard or a hot burner where you touch it and it gets you okay asbestos takes a long time to manifest in your body in, in different ways that we'll talk about but the problem is the latency period is 10 to 40 years and so you do something, there's not an immediate consequence, you're probably going to do it again. And so when you look at the snow, uh, the other pieces, the uses specifically in Wizard of Oz, the Scarecrow's uh, costume was made out of asbestos. The Wicked Witch's broom was made out of asbestos. So it was like this asbestos cornucopia, okay? And every one of them, every one of them died. They say not, not, not related to asbestos because they didn't have those kind of tests back then or they weren't thinking about it as much. But they're, they're pretty sure that, and I believe it was the Tin Man, that died of respiratory failure. And the the office that I was reading about are pretty sure that was a, a case that was not identified as mesothelioma. So, cause it, it wasn't seen back then. Now we see, you know, four to five ads of meso, you know, mesothelioma experts every five minutes talking about getting compensation. But yeah, Wizard of Oz was, Wizard of Oz, it's just an interesting scene. You know, and you talk about the white snow, the Christmas tree snow that your grandparents put on their tree every year. Same thing, folks. That's that was that was flaky chrysotile, and just because the tree leaves doesn't mean it's not in the carpet or the ducks. So pretty alarming once you look back, you know. Yep. Yeah. yeah, another one that we could look at would be uh, uh, what was it? Uh, I played during Christmas in our in our in our in our classes. Uh, it's Bing Crosby singing "I'm Dreaming of White Christmas" in town, and these guys walking through snow, and it's beautiful and it's deadly because it's all asbestos as well. They actually do a pan out of the scene where they show guys just sifting the stuff above all the actors. They're just sifting this Christ tile right on top of them, and I thought, 
how many takes does it take to get the last scene shot? I mean, you know, it's it's not like they just take one crack at it and be like, all right, that's it, no more, we're done. Uh, it could have been multiple scenes, and and how many movies did it? And so, Wizard of Oz is obviously just the the, the most famous one that we see oftentimes. So, yeah, good. So, Zone Light. Uh, Joe, you you have personal experience with this one. I've, I've dealt with this one quite a bit as well. Uh, now. If you want, I'll talk just a little bit of specifics of vermiculite, kind of like you hit on a little bit earlier. Vermiculite is not asbestos. In fact, the, the picture here does a good job of separating it out. Uh, you have the larger chunks in this picture that, that are more the zonalite, the vermiculite brand. Um, and it looks like uh, whoever took this picture separated out some of the asbestos out of it, uh, at least what they could identify and, and remove from it. That's what it is. It's loosely bound into it. The zonalite brand comes from Libby, Montana. Uh, it is the only known source of, of vermiculite that contains asbestos. And if you want to look up the Libby, Montana, and do some re research on Libby, Montana, it'll send you down a rabbit's trail of, of some really sad information. Um, well over 400 identified deaths in Libby, Montana caused by the mining of the zonalite. Uh, this stuff was commonly used in attic insulation, uh, you know, up until uh, the, the 50s, 60s, where we were still using it, uh, into the 70s, possibly. And, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things that we just, uh, we, we see a lot in our industry. It's not always asbestos, but oftentimes it can be. Uh, it's, it's a hit and miss on this one. I'm about 50-50 when it comes to vermiculite containing asbestos when I'm doing a, like a, a hair building inspection. So uh, this is just one to look out for. Uh, Joe gave a pretty good description of it. If you have insulation in your attic that looks like kitty litter, that's most likely vermiculite. I really I would highly recommend getting a test to find out what it is. It could be extremely flighty if you're dealing with it. I've done some abatement on this before. Uh, I usually do asbestos removal. And uh, I know I know from personal experience, this one's not a, not a lot of fun to deal with. So in a home homeowner's uh, situation, re uh, residential situation, you don't want to get into this stuff. Uh, um, let the professionals deal with something like this. So good. As a homeowner, I have a question because we, we have a newer home and you know growing up you don't go in the attic you don't touch the insulation in there and we had a water leak and the abatement people had to go up into the attic and that was in our master closet is where the the attic entrance is and we had insulation fall and mm -hmm. i guess as a homeowner how do i know is this the okay stuff because it's such a new home or is this stuff i need to worry about um help me out here on that one a little bit all right, so the, the way the rules go. Now, whoever's watching this, uh, you need to know what your local regulations are. Now, asbestos is, is regulated on all different levels. You have the federal regulations from EPA and OSHA. You have state regulations, like in Washington State here, we have our own rules and regulations. Now, I live and work in Benton County, and in Benton County, they have their own regulations pertaining to asbestos. So in Benton County, it says that no contractor is supposed to start any work without obtaining an asbestos report. So does Washington State. Contractors by law are supposed to be collecting asbestos samples or, let me be more technical, they're supposed to call guys like me and Joe up to come properly collect samples to verify the presence of asbestos prior to even starting their construction job. So when they come in and do their assessment, when they come in and do a uh, quick walk down of, the, of, say, the damage, say, they're around the closet and everything else, everything that's affected by that water damage is supposed to be tested for the presence of asbestos because I can't give you an exact cutoff date on any of these products. We could say with pretty good confidence that the insulation, because it was banned back in 1975, uh, that all insulation products should have been out of our market by maybe the early 80s. So your house being newer, probably not a big deal in that case, but you said it affected your closet? Yes. It did. Well, what, what kind of walls and ceilings did you have? Uh, we have drywall um, sheets that mm -hmm. they had to open up everything, about two stories of open yeah. wall space in there. Mm -hmm. Yep, and, and that's, where you might, that's where you might have had an issue is the sheetrock and the mud. Uh, the sh and, uh, not so much these days, but older older homes, the tape as well. So the sheetrock and mud up until just a few years ago could have easily been asbestos still. Um, in fact, I found, I've, I've seen stuff at uh, the local hardware stores that had it. Now, now here's a trick that they played for a lot of years on asbestos. 
uh, they would they would label materials. Say I, I have a can of I don't know this is coffee, but whatever. Uh, they have, I have a can of sheetrock mud here. What they, the, the manufacturers oftentimes would do for a lot of years was they would say, instead of saying, oh, this, watch out, this contains asbestos, they'll say, oh, this contains natural mineral fibers. Well, that sounds way better than asbestos. Natural mineral, mineral fibers sounds pretty decent. Uh, I'll, I'll let you know ahead of time. There are no other natural mineral fibers that we're using in the construction industry other than asbestos, but it sure sounds nice, doesn't it? So that's the problem. Up until recently, it could have been used. People could have bought these products, not really thinking of it. So, yes, it could have potentially been in the mud. It could have potentially been in the in the sheet rock. Uh, that 2019 ban that was put out really kind of helped to remove that stuff from the hardware stores, but it didn't quite 100% get rid of it. So, as a homeowner, we never know. As a homeowner, you have the right and responsibility, or you have the right to question the contractor. The contractor has a responsibility to make sure they are educated about this and they understand the requirements so they protect you during their during their activities so yeah hopefully that answers the question <laughs> hopefully yeah, it doesn't you. make you more nervous yeah <laughs> it did thank yeah. you now the guy I'm, I'm assuming i'm assuming yeah that i didn't show up to do the hair inspection on your house i'm assuming somebody else did don't say yes or no just that i'd leave it at that <laughs> perfect we'll let yeah. so yeah so <laughs> yeah so yeah so going through those we just have a couple slides Briefly on the different types, just for pictures. So yeah, adelite insulation is a big one. If you have that vermiculite type stuff, specifically zonalite. Another one, siding. And so the the siding, when we go out and we do inspections, uh, for instance, uh, Mike just went out and we've gone out on different, let's say, window installations. So you see that window in there. These guys are going to replace the windows, make them really nice. Well, in this case, if we look at that wall, that's, it looks a little more aged. But some places, sometimes they have vinyl siding, newer. Well, what will happen is somebody will just cover up some older, uglier siding. You know, as we get better technology and more aesthetically pleasing things, <clears throat> you know, they'll cover up a house. The problem is nobody knows what's under that. And so that's where these inspections come in is if I just go out and do it myself or a contractor comes out and doesn't sample, window guys go out, pull the window out, they mess with the edges, you know, some of the caulk, the silicones, whatever, put a new window in. Well, what they didn't see was, you know, under that nice pretty vinyl siding, there's cement asbestos board right behind it. And so as a homeowner, that's where these type of things come in. It's not the readily identifiable, hey, that wall says asbestos on it. That makes sense. It's the under. It's when you pull off that sheetrock and you have John's Mansville insulation in there and you go, huh, maybe I should have probably gotten this sampled. I don't know. You know, it's, that's the hard part. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the scary thing is, is when we get called after, after the fact. When we get called on a job and they say, hey, Mike, we think we may have found some asbestos on this job. Uh, you didn't touch it, did you? Well, uh, it's like, oh, no, <laughs> what did you get into? So uh, a similar job happened just recently where they had aluminum siding on an on a older home. Looked real pretty. It was great looking. Everything was fine. Windows were getting replaced, and the contractor had actually cut through some cement board with a saw. Then, then they found the asbestos. Then they called us up, and I said, oh, yeah, a little bit, a little bit late on that one. <laughs> so, should have called me before you cut through it. But at least they knew to identify and stop. Unfortunately, they had already damaged. Just think about the age of your, home, of your home. There's a good chance on an older house, the siding might be covering up a surprise for you guys. So yeah, that, that's what we got into. Um, if you just touch the siding on your house, don't worry about it. Not a big deal. It's a non-friable, non which means it's not going to release fibers that easily. Um, but just be, be careful with it. If you have to cut through it or anything else, uh, that's something to definitely watch out for on siding products. And the other one's a tile. So if you look at this picture, this is what we what Mike exactly just said, non-friable. So a friable material is you can take it and you can pulverize it by hand. So that's, that's the really ugly stuff, the really nasty stuff. There's the other stuff's all miscellaneous materials, and that's 90% of the stuff you're going to run into, or people like us, it's these tiles. So when you look at this picture, there's, let's just say there's asbestos in it. It's presumed we tested it. Uh, the problem is you see that bare area, and so chairs have gone over that and top of it. Things have been moved over the top. So once that finish comes off that tile, you start getting to the raw material, that's where you can start having problems, and you're starting to release some fibers. But I think we've all been in old buildings where, you know, you move and other people move in and it's cubicle upon cubicle farm and you just keep ripping up that tile and you don't think about it. We're not talking about the ugly vermiculite. That's the obvious. It's the stuff right under you 
that now you're starting to release those fibers or people refinishing the floor releasing those. I'm thinking of every church function I ever went to at my home church growing up that had tile exactly like that in our multi-purpose room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Interesting. I, did, I yeah. just tested something a couple years ago and it was, uh, yeah, I, I just got a 4% asbestos sample off one just, just a little bit ago on a, on a church in, in Prosser. So luckily they, they took the right steps. They tested it first and got it t dealt with properly. Uh, you, you know, in this picture here, Joe, what, 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 concerns me the most is at the top of the picture what is all that white stuff well, exactly the tiles yeah they look like they're damaged but what the heck is all that white stuff there and where did it come from this is what i want people to look out for in their day-to-day -day activities those tiles by themselves could be a hazard if they keep getting damaged the way that they are but keeping a lookout for stuff like that anything that's white and powdery uh stay away from it guys uh it's it's not something you want to mess with so leave it alone that looks like some damaged, uh, looks like maybe some of the walls or something, or heaven forbid some piping was around there and that got damaged. Uh, but yeah, that's definitely a concern to me on that one. Absolutely. Unless you are Bing Crosby or you're part of Wizard of Oz, stay away from that. <laughs> and even they should have, to be honest. So we'll show you the, we'll show you a, a clip of a guy doing his own work. We just talked about this with HGTV. And uh, this gentleman has been seen on uh, millions of views on YouTube. Uh, been posted when I go look at social media his videos showed up on anything from tip hero to a couple different DIY sites and furthermore when I go out and look I just looked Monday because we were actually teaching a certified worker initial course and we like to find some new material once in a while it keeps it fresh there are three pages of people doing what this guy does and these are professionals who own their own companies so it's not just one you're talking three pages that I went through just on YouTube so we'll show this real quick and then we'll go through the exposure the effects Hi, I'm Aaron, and I'm going to show you how to remove popcorn ceilings from your house. If your house was built in the 70s like mine was, chances are you have popcorn ceilings. It's very messy. It's very hard to do. As you can see, I have nice white carpet. I didn't want to get it all over. One of the traditional ways is to spray it with water and then scrape it off, and that makes it easy to clean up, not too much dust. But I've made a better way. As you can see, what I've done here is taken a six-inch spackle knife and essentially just duct taped it to the end of my shop vac. And if you watch here, it works very well. didn't really spill a drop Could probably do a whole room this size in 10 minutes there you go how to remove your popcorn ceilings all right oh, that, one, that one yeah. no aaron it's 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 aaron, aaron. I, there you go. Aaron, 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 i was called andy i don't know why yeah <laughs> he, he looks he looks like an andy i don't know yeah old aaron um gosh you know it's amazing, you know, it's social media for you, right? I mean, you can do like the dumbest things and get millions of views. Uh, and Aaron, if you were to read through his comments on that video, which I've seen that video uh, hundreds of times now in class, uh, you know, he's got a lot of really positive feedback. I've said, where, where are all the trolls at? Guys, trolls, come out from underneath your rocks here and get this guy, you know? So we would actually leave bad comments on the video just so people understood, like, hey, oh, maybe this is a bad thing. This guy is leaving bad comments. Maybe I should think about the diseases and the health effects of asbestos exposure. But no, and then, then people start thumbs downing my comments. Like, oh, leave him alone, <laughs> boo. And they start thumbs downing me like, hey, I'm trying to help you out here. I'm trying to get you some information. That's good. Uh, people like convenience. That's what it comes down to. If you can find a quicker, faster way of getting something done. Uh, and in his case, it didn't look like it made a big mess until the very end, which is a, not a good thing. Um, you know, people are looking for the easy way out all the time. Asbestos abatement is not cheap. To do it correctly is it, it, not, not a cheap thing. Um, this is where you work with your homeowner's insurance to see if you can get it done properly. Now, there are also procedures for homeowners to properly deal with asbestos if you guys want to remove your own material. Do not get your information from YouTube. What Aaron did just, just contaminated his entire house. 
Remember what Joe said, if you have a penny you, on the chin of Abe Lincoln on a penny, 1,000 asbestos fibers, that's, that's or fits 20,000 20, asbestos fibers. Think about what might be in the air. Think about what came out of that vacuum at the end of that video. But then it, it settled into his carpet. And now every time they grab the Hoover and start sucking up that stuff and vacuuming that carpet, where's the, where are those fibers going? Right back into the air, probably into his ventilation system. Now it's through the house. One big mistake on asbestos could expose people for quite a few years later. And, and that's something to think about. It, it keeps getting disturbed, keeps getting stirred up, and that's a big problem. Uh, yeah, definitely, please. Seek out advice from a professional if you plan on doing your own asbestos work. Uh, are you guys going to leave links for us, uh, for contacting us here, Joe? Yeah. Yeah, they're Absolutely. Like, yeah. Good. Please. I always have my phone with me. Call me, text me, email me. Uh, before you do something like that, please get a hold of us so we can help you out with that. That's that's a big deal. Let's get you guys set up and go get all the information ahead of time. Not that we're advocating people go be trolls on the internet, but <laughs> when you know the information, <laughs> it's helpful to uh, correct a wrong. Yeah, yeah, well, and it makes it no, hard. Don't troll us. We're trying to be, we're the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to do it anyways. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but when you see something that potentially not safe, call them out. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah, because the problem is, so I had a I had a, a All right. contract that I used I, I, multiple years. You there, Mike? Jess, can you hear me? Oh, okay. So. I got pause there. So yeah, my, my contractor would come out and did multiple things, you know, framing, yeah, sheet rocking, whatever. Okay. Okay. So the one class I had, and this is on this slide, this is why we, we talk about this. So the contractor I had came out and looked at my entire house full of popcorn ceiling, said he could perform the job for 2000 bucks. Well, I've, I've never had anything done by a contractor that was 2000 bucks, let alone a full asbestos abatement. And so I asked at that point, I was finally licensed and said, how are you doing that for 2000 bucks? I said, well, you know, we're good. I said, no, no, are you going to sample? Are you going to look at asbestos? And he got, he got offended. And I was like, look, I have been chain smoking for 40 years, and I have done sheetrock work for 40 years, and my lungs are completely clean. Well, remember, I said a couple slides ago, latency periods 10 to 40 years. This guy was about 87, literally, and I'm not joking. He was an expert in his field. 10 to 40 years for him might not be a big deal, but I never used him again because I have a three-year-old in the house. So now, why would he have to suffer the effects of mesothelioma or asbestosis we're going to talk about at 13, at 20 years old? So you think about that. It's, it's not your house. You might be like, I don't care. It's as easy. Well, all you also got to think about the public. You got to think about the people buying your house, the people outside that are getting affected by it. It's no joke. And these are the consequences of it. That's what we're showing you. This is a miracle fiber, but there are massive consequences. And these are the consequences of exposure. These are just two on here. And I'll let Mike, Mike does a great job about explaining them. The third one that's not on here is lung cancer. And so that's, lung cancer is seen in asbestos patients. But the other two are these two. I, I got a perfect story about that one. Yeah. You want me to take these on, Joe? All right. Yep. So. Let's start with the one that everyone talks about anyways. Uh, mesothelioma, we'll get that one out of the way. Um, this one is, uh, this is a nasty one. This, so there's a reason why mesothelioma gets a lot more information or a lot more credit than these other two diseases uh, get. There's a stark difference between mesothelioma and asbestosis. Mesothelioma is a very rare and aggressive type of cancer. Now, if you're watching this, take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. If inflate the lungs, feel that, feel your lungs spreading and moving. Now, between your lungs and your ribs, we have this thin membrane, thin lining called your mesothelial lining of your lungs. I'm going to dumb it down. We're going to call it the pleural lining because that's what it's also called. The mesothelioma is cancer from inside the pleural lining. Well, these asbestos fibers that you breathe in, you can't see them. They're floating in the air. You breathe these things in, they get in the lungs. And in some cases, they can cause damage inside that pleural cavity. If that damage turns into cancer, it becomes malignant mesothelioma. The problem with malignant mesothelioma is it's not the type of cancer that stays put. It doesn't stay in one spot. Malignant mesothelioma will spread rapidly through the pleural cavity. It'll spread through the lung tissue, and then it'll metastasize and it'll get in the bloodstream. This is exactly why the lawyers push this one the hardest on TV. You don't hear much about asbestosis. Mesothelioma spreads like wildfire through the body 
for the victims that come down with it. And typically those who get mesothelioma, because of its, its, its aggressive nature, uh, they usually will pass away from, from that disease within about a year to two years from, by, from being diagnosed. Uh, that, that's why that one gets a lot of credit. Um, and that's why people are so concerned about this one is that it doesn't play by the same rules as asbestos diseases. Then switch over to the other side, asbestosis. Asbestosis is not cancer. It's just scarring of your lungs. Think about, uh, if, you, if you know anything about cars, think about the air filter in your car or the air filter in your home. Uh, once they get plugged up, they don't work too well. That's the idea. Your lungs are the air filter to your body. They take the oxygen that we breathe in and they put in the bloodstream and your body uses that oxygenated blood for all your muscles and your vital organs and everything. And essentially all asbestosis is, is uh, the plugging up of your air filter. It's the clogging of your lungs. And it takes a long time for this disease to manifest the body. You need both of those to get it. It's not something that you're, you get exposed one day and you wake up the next day and you have asbestosis. You're not going to find out for years and years later. I personally know people with asbestosis. I personally have had students with asbestosis. And I have to ask them what their, what their story is. How did you get it? How did it occur? Just 20 or 30 years ago, I was doing this for a job or I was doing that for a job. And now it's starting to finally show the symptoms. This is a scary one. It's like getting burnt, but not feeling it for 20 or 30 years, even up to 40 years in some cases. Um, you know, you wouldn't think about hot things if they didn't burn you for, you know, quite some time later or later on. So that's a tough one. Now, even though it's not on the screen here, we're going to briefly discuss lung cancer because this one hits close to home with me. I lost two coworkers, people I used to do a special abatement front with uh, to lung cancer. Uh, if you are a smoker, you're a smoker. I'm not going to tell you what to do. All right. I'm not your dad. I'm not going to tell you to quit smoking. My job is, is to educate people about asbestos and the, the dangers here. If you're a smoker and exposed, you have up to a 90 times greater chance of getting lung cancer than a non-smoker, non-asbestos worker. So think about your home. Think about where you live. If you smoke and you do your own stuff around your house, your, your chance of, uh, of getting lung cancer are increased if you're being exposed to asbestos and you're smoking. Just be smart about stuff. Be very careful. Not that bad to get something tested. It's pretty easy to find out if, there, if a product has asbestos in it or not. Protect yourself from it. The lung cancer thing is no joke. I, I, I lost two coworkers to it, and then actually one of their wives also passed away from lung cancer, um, and she got the exposure from uh, her husband bringing it home from after work. Um, you know, there, there's other, there's, uh, there's more to that story that we won't, we don't have time to get into, but uh, essentially he didn't do proper work practices. He brought it home with him when he came home. And uh, it's really a sad deal. Uh, when you see someone who can't breathe, it really opens up your eyes a little bit to, to how precious our lungs are uh, and protecting them from everything that we can. So that's the brief description of these diseases. Uh, we could go into great detail, but I, you know, I could talk about each one of these for an hour pretty easily, uh, but I think we—it's enough to where uh, you should be careful. <clears throat> so, so one extra piece to that that Mike just talked about—we threw out a term latency period. The other one is called dose response. So, what that means mm -hmm. is the more dose you take of something, the yeah. response is greater to get it. So, if you talk about lung cancer and asbestosis, it takes a while to get it. The more the more exposure you have, you can get it easier. It's a greater exposure. The caveat is mesothelioma. There is no dose response. It's not the longer you do the work, the greater chance. It can happen without that dose response. Doesn't matter if you do a ton of work or a little bit of work. So that's the scary one. That that's why that one's scary, and the fact that it's so aggressive. So, so, mm -hmm. so that as, as homeowners and yeah. and building owners, uh, what do we need to do to make sure that we're protecting ourselves? So yeah, we went through quite a bit of, uh, you need the sampling, right? You have somebody who is a certified, not, not Mr. You know, not Jimmy down the street with his, you know, his little DIY asbestos sampling kit. Okay. That doesn't happen. There's a reason those don't exist out there in Home Depot. Um, you want somebody who is accredited, who has a company to come in that can do it. They're professionals. Mike and I do this. There's a number of people that do it in different areas and different states. Uh, but that'd be the first step is that preventative, right? We try to, we try to check it before we do the work. Uh, the problem is we can't be everywhere at once. It's a contractor has to come in and do it. They have to do their due diligence. Uh, 
it's required on any renovation or construction, exactly like Mike said. It looks like Mike dropped off with that Wi-Fi. So we talked about that quite a bit. The protection for you, if you are going to do this in the industry, for one, you're going to have to have training by us. You're going to have to have certified or licensed. Uh, but the lowest level is uh, I, I met with one of the facilities managers at the school district where we're at. Him and his coworkers are trained because they see it a lot regularly. And so they know how to respond to it. They know how to protect themselves prior to doing the work. The problem is when you look at the side people, so custodians or janitorial, teachers, uh, parents that are walking in, children, that's always the biggest one. Uh, if they do work somewhere and there is dust left over, those kids can get into it. And when I talked to him, the custodians yep. in this case have not got the training on it because they didn't think about that group doing it. The, here's the work. Let's get this group trained and certified and go abate. And then they walk away. Well, what happens to the person who's doing the floors and just mopping up and they see it? Now we have a problem. So I'll go through real quick on just a couple of controls and then Mike, you can chime in. It looks like you're back in. But protecting yourself, there, there's multiple controls. And, and we talk about it in asbestos greatly. Yeah, yeah. Pretty I'm much in any environmental training we do, any, any safety training we do, whether it's lead, any hazard that can enter your body. Uh, we teach us in both human performance on the Lucas OPT side and in asbestos training on Mike's side on American Safety when we partner. You want multiple controls. One is not enough. It might be okay, but as many as you can get as possible is better. So containments, you know, this would be like an actual abatement job. If you look at that, if you're not doing that, you're a homeowner, you're probably not looking at this like that. But containments are big. Contain the area. If you're doing anything, I mean, if you're painting in a room, you, I put up plastic because I don't want to crap up the rest of the house. You know, I, there's a sign in that. So you see that sign, it's a little hard to read, but that's to tell people walking by, hey, don't walk in here. Don't come in here. There's danger in here. There's some bad stuff. So if there are people doing work in your house or you do this for a living, you're going to want to engineer those controls. You're engineering a barrier from that hazard. So containment would be one. Another one's ventilation. Okay, so this is what we use, that big old beast of a machine there. Uh, it is a specific, it's a negative air machine. This is not a shop vac duct tape to a piece of plastic and suck an air out of the place you work. Okay, there's, without going deep, there are specific, there are specific requirements that we have for ventilation. So that would be another one. Uh, you saw in Aaron's video, he had hit the shop vac and he had the exit pipe out the window. Okay, so when I talked about outside people, well, nobody knows he's doing that job. Anybody walks by, now he's throwing all that dust, all those fibers right out the window. He's not concerned about it, right? I mean, you should be. But what about the people outside? Now think about in a building, because that's just outside. You got a lot of air. If you're doing work in your house, and I've had multiple friends do their popcorn standings themselves, and I can't give them advice as an inspector. They'd have to call me. You can't just, you know, but as a friend, hey, I'm doing this job. Oh, did you do it? Well, I already did it. Okay, well, what did you do? Oh, we did this wrap and this and that. And, you know, we wore some PPE, personal pr protective equipment. Well, did you turn your air vents off? Well, no. Okay, I really wish you would have called somebody before, because... You know, now you've really not protected anything. You've just started over. Your ducks are shot, right? So, yeah, ventilation and containment are two ways to protect yourself. And PPE is the last line. So what I mean by that, please understand, I was at a job last week, and if they have asbestos in this facility, if they come into it, their managers say, just put on your PPE. That's, that's not correct. This is not like your bulletproof vest. When you put this respirator on, it saves you from everything. No, this is one control, and it's the last control. You, you contain or you engineer a control in, you have procedures, signage, whatever, before you ever get to this spot. And Mike, you want to throw anything in on that? Yeah. Yeah, so depending on where you live, uh, there are procedures that, that are created for homeowners. If you have asbestos in your home and you want to get rid of it, uh, um, say you live in Benton County, like I do. Uh, Benton County Clean Air actually has procedures for homeowners to their their website. Uh, you could do a search for asbestos, and uh, you can pull up procedures. Say you want to get rid of your popcorn ceiling. I don't recommend that you do it yourself, but if you really needed to, you could follow the proper procedures for Benton Clean Air. It'll give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to properly set up the work area, how to keep it away from you, proper controls or work practices when dealing with it, and uh, how to dispose of it properly, too. Uh, there, there, There is information out there for you guys. Uh, you know, we're one phone call away, one email or text message away. Uh, but really, if, if, you, if you are a do-it-yourself or if you want to do something on your own, uh, all these controls are important. 
keep it off keep it off of your 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 carpet keep it off your furniture contain it with plastic and plastic is cheap you can get a roll of plastic sheeting uh from your local hardware store and it's about a hundred dollars for a hundred foot by 20 roll it'll it'll go a long ways you can contain a good section of your house with one roll of plastic that's a hundred bucks this respirator that you see right here you get a mask just like that from the, your local hardware store 30 or 40 bucks it's cheap protective suit i don't know maybe 20 bucks they're they're, they're fairly cheap you could do a proper job with with uh you know, with all the, the right controls in place, and you can do it uh, for a decent price. And so there's really no excuse for doing it like uh, like Aaron did in that video that we saw, where none of the controls were used and where asbestos was spread out through his entire house. Um, you know, staying safe with asbestos is not uh, it's not hard. It's not something that you have to really, uh, you know, sit there and strategically plan every event, get the procedure, get the material, and uh, be safe. The best thing that I can do that you can do with it is once you contain everything, keep it wet. Water is your friend. Put a good surfactant in it, like a soap, like a Dawn dish soap works really well. A little bit of soap in your water, spray it down, soak your materials, keep that dust down, and uh, it's really not the hardest thing to deal with. So, yeah, that, and that's the basics for controls. Like I said, I would, I'd much rather you guys just call us and we'll walk you through it. Yep. Wonderful. Well, you guys, thank you for this information. Uh, while you were talking, we did have a, a question come in from, from someone joining us today. Um, and this person wants to know, you, you guys have mentioned that you're, you're trainers and inspectors. What courses do you guys teach regarding this? Okay. Uh, we got a whole bunch of them. Um, so you can get a hold of us, or you go to our website, it's American Safety Law, WA, uh, dot com, and it'll give you a whole list of stuff that we teach. But we teach all asbestos training, asbestos supervisor, asbestos worker, hair building inspector. Uh, we, we teach uh, more technical stuff like project designer courses. And then we also get into lead, mold, and a lot of other stuff as well. Uh, if it's environmental and it's a safety hazard, most likely we teach it. So. Uh, we like to make sure that uh, no matter what you guys might come across, whatever you guys might get in, get in contact with, that uh, we can give the information that uh, that could help you guys out with that. So that's what we teach. Uh, anything asbestos related, we got it. We're on it. Wonderful. And and for what else you got? For, for the novices out there, what? Who do you recommend take these courses? Who needs to be trained on this uh, from a regulation level? And then who maybe ought to do it because they like to be DIYers at home? So re regulatory wise, I, I think everyone or every contractor should go through some kind of asbestos awareness training for all their employees. Um, anyone who's gonna have their guys working in a home that or, or building, uh, that has any age to it at all, there's a good chance they might come across it. And so I highly recommend that all contractors at least develop some kind of asbestos awareness training program for their guys. We could do these courses online. We could do them in person. Uh, we could even do uh, some kind of just strictly web-based training where someone could just log in on their free time and, and take care of their training. Uh, that's a good starting point. If a contractor knows that they're going to be getting into asbestos abatement or, or getting into removal of any type of asbestos products, that's where we're going to need to step into some of those certified asbestos worker, certified asbestos uh, supervisor courses for those. Uh, so all contractors, schools, schools are a big one. All schools have to make sure that their people are trained in asbestos awareness training. Um, and that's really a kind of big one because I think about my kids going there. You know, Joe talked about his son briefly. I got three of them. And... Uh, Luckily, one of them is already out of high school, so I just have two left that I'm worried about now. And, uh, you know, I think about the schools that they go to, and I want to make sure that they're protected when they're at school as well. So that's a big one. Um, and then if you just own a building, if you are the building owner of any kind of, uh, of office building, you need to make sure you protect your people as well. So proper training, inspections, and a proper maintenance program is a big deal for all building owners as well. But that's what I recommend at this point. Uh, I think we covered just about it. pretty much everyone needs trainings. I think is what we came down to. So I think pretty that's pretty much, pretty much. That's what I got out of it. So thank you very much. So uh, Joe, you have anything to add before we wrap it up? All right. 
No, other than exactly what Mike said, give us a call. Give us a contact. If you have a question at all, it's better to have a question and ask mm -hmm. and have it not be a problem than to go through with it and regret it. Yep. Wonderful. Well, I want to thank everyone for yep. joining us thank today uh, for uh, June's uh, continuing education event. Uh, I would encourage all of you to follow mm -hmm. us on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn, and YouTube. Uh, visit our website at lucasopt.com. Uh, as we mentioned at the beginning, uh, mm -hmm. Mike is a partner of ours here at Lucas OPT, and we are very thankful for you joining us today. Uh, we will have a, a continuing education event again next month, and we do offer regular micro trainings that we call our performance tips. So again, visit our website or follow us on social media for more information. So thanks again for joining us today. Have a wonderful day.